A 15-year-old teenage girl named Tita Oliveira lives in Barra da Tijuca, a neighborhood in Rio. She is the only child in the family, so she has all their love and attention. The nerdy and socially awkward Tita has no friends at school. Unlike her classmates and groups, Tita feels like an outcast for not having someone to talk to. She describes herself as someone who exists, but is invisible because she rarely speaks. Despite everything, Tita aces in class and becomes the teacher's favorite. One time after earning the highest score, she gets noticed by Gustavo Sampaio, an attractive guy who only got half of her score. While walking home, she is surprised when Gustavo talks to her. She feels nervous because she has never had a conversation with anyone at school. The lad compliments Tita for having good grades, which flatters her. She cannot move past their encounter, so she stalks the guy's Instagram account. Account. For Tite, Gustavo is the definition of perfection. Tite is not a beach lover, but after meeting Gustavo, she likes hanging out with him near the shore. They became study buddies, and she tutors him on difficult subjects. Spending days with Gustavo makes her feel like a normal teenage girl, with an amazing social life. On their next exam, Tite is proud of herself for being a great tutor. Gustavo has earned higher scores, and his grades has also improved. The man is grateful, so he hugs Tite tightly. Tite, on the other hand, falls in love with him, and the man's gesture makes her think he is also into her. Suddenly, Tite initiates a kiss, but Gustavo stops her. The man apologizes for misleading Tite and clarifies he only befriended her to get higher grades, because Gustavo's parents were pressuring him to improve his academics. Out of embarrassment, Tite only utters sorry and goes inside the classroom. Students are laughing at her as she passes by their seats. Because of this incident, Tite regretted leaving her comfort zone, and realized it's better to be an outcast. After being humiliated at school, a heartbroken Tite returns home. She then discovers her father has lost his job. Her parents have decided to sell the apartment, and move in with her grandparents at Copacabana. The teenage girl is forced to pack her things, and they leave the small neighborhood of Barra the next day. Family bullying may not be a popular term, but it concerns Teat. The teenage girl feels her grandparents' house has a similar atmosphere as school. Her grandma, Janira, comments negatively on her physical appearance, which makes her feel even more insecure. She also recommends consulting a psychiatrist because she is different from girls her age. Grandma and Teat's mom explain they are only concerned, as she doesn't leave the house, has no friends, and doesn't laugh. The teenage girl doesn't even brush her hair or fix herself to look more presentable. Her mom also finds her armpits ugly because she never takes care of them. If she listens to music or reads a book, it's only the sad ones that she's fond of. Her grandma also notices the little things, like she is not fond of eating chocolates. She also hates her mustache and suggests removing it. If the women in the house want Tita to get a makeover, the men are the opposite. Tita's grandpa and father like the way she looks. They also tell the lady it's fine to grow a mustache because boys don't care about it in the first place. Grandpa advises her not to rush on boys, because she would meet someone in the future who would accept her wholeheartedly. The women disagree. Janira advises her to date men, like how her mother did when she was her age. They also encourage her to pursue the good-looking 12-year-old boy who lives next door. He will celebrate his birthday soon, and grandma forces her to attend. Teet finds her family crazy for pressuring her. She cannot take it anymore, so she stands up and excuses herself. Before she could leave, Janera mindlessly utters her nickname Dead Pits Teet, making her furious. It was only then she discovers her mom had shared her ugly nickname with her grandma and with the whole neighborhood during the condo meeting. Teet's parents are not sorry. In fact, they thought it was a good idea because her neighbors would welcome and accept her. In the end, Teet walks out while her parents wish her the best at school. Teet breathes deeply as she looks at herself in the mirror. She also wonders why it is hard for her to make friends. Teet has hyperhidrosis, a condition where she sweats excessively when nervous. This is why her family calls her Dead Pits Teet. The first day of school, and being a transferee makes her sweat a lot. Teet ensures that her armpits don't become an issue with her new classmates. However, she arrives with lots of sweat on her shirt. She dashes to the comfort room to fix it. Desperate to not be seen by anyone, her hands quickly pull the tissue causing the dispenser to break. Two attractive mean girls witness it. Bell rings, so she has an excuse to hurry up to class and escape the mess. The lady finally finds her classroom and gets inside. She feels like an outcast, seeing other students talking to their friends, compared to her, who never gets noticed by anyone. Teet sits next to a nerdy guy, who is also a loner. She initiates a conversation, to at least feel like a typical student on her first day. The lad was friendly and funny, making Teet feel at ease. He is Davi Arajo, an intelligent guy who also lives with his grandparents. They become friends after, and the man shares he has an older brother, who goes to college. Davi has a positive outlook in life. He doesn't pity himself, even after losing his parents and turns his experience as motivation to do well. Teet stalks him on social media and confirms his story to be true. The teenage girl eventually meets his hilarious grandpa and the whole family. She is slightly attracted to Davi but soon sets it aside and treats him as a friend instead. Teet's world stops when a cute blonde guy enters the room. His smile melts her heart and she cannot stop staring at him. He is Eric Goulart, the popular boy at school. Teet swears she won't be awkward around him, but in her mind, she wants to initiate a conversation. Eric is so handsome that she considers him the love of her life. Even if he has the perfect face ratio, he is not gifted with intelligence. Eric approaches Davi to copy his homework. Regardless, it is not a reason for Teet to not fall for him. Eric shares how he spends his weekend surfing. The next day, Teet and he go to the beach. They have a great time playing in the water, not until a huge wave hits Teet hard. 
She wakes up and realizes it was only a dream. Eric is still writing before her. Davy introduces Eric to the lady, which makes her rattle. She fixes her hair, stands up, and utters, hair man instead of hey man. Eric laughs hard, and she feels embarrassed. Nervous, T talks fast, explaining and apologizing, even if she has nothing to be sorry about. Suddenly, the mean girls appear behind her. The blonde one is Valentina, a popular girl on the campus, but a bully. Her best friend is Lies, who stays by her side wherever she goes. It is only then Teet learns Valentina is Eric's girlfriend. The mean girl thinks Teet is flirting with her man. In return, Valentina threatens to post the video of Teet they recorded in the washroom, to humiliate her. Eric tries to stop her, but she won't listen. Lies, on the other hand, warns her best friend that it's illegal to record someone without permission. Valentina stops but makes fun of Teet's name. The poor girl pleads not to post the video. Valentina boasts she is famous on social media, and Teet missed a chance to become viral with her help. Eric apologizes on behalf of his girlfriend. A proud queer, Seca, was about to sit, but a rude man stops him. Teet pities the man, and offers him a chair next to her. The girl asks if Seca was fine, but the lad acts cold towards her. Seca frankly tells the lady he doesn't make friends with people he's only met for the first time. Teet apologizes. Samantha hears everything, and approaches Teet to make her feel better. She also glares at Seca for being mean. Teet is amused that someone wants to be her friend. She thinks it's a good start to not feel like an outcast in high school. The two walk home together, and Samantha keeps calling her girlfriend. She also offers to fit her shoelace, making Teet feel shy. Teet cannot believe they are friends, because it happened in a snap. The ladies soon discover they are neighbors. Samantha knows Teet's grandma, who patronizes her mom's salon. She also loves her because she's sweet. Teet eagerly listens to the lady talking. Since Samantha is her newfound friend, Teet doesn't want to create any problem and acts natural. According to Samantha, her grandmother always mentions her at the salon. Teet feels nervous thinking she may have shared her embarrassing nickname. Samantha pities her for having such name. It could be the reason why she never had any friends back home. Teet denies that she had no friends at Barra. She lies saying she had a lot of friends, and she frequently went out with them. Samantha doesn't believe her. She knew from her grandma that she was lonely, and didn't have friends. That is why Samantha befriended her, and also because her grandma requested her to do so. Teet was hurt learning Samantha was with her only because she was forced to. She also freaked out when Samantha revealed something. Teet returns home, screaming her grandma's name. She is mad at her for paying Samantha to befriend her. The older woman doesn't apologize, believing it was a good idea. Her grandma also makes rude comments about her jobless dad and her mom, who never practiced her degree. Her mother changes the topic, and asks about school. Teet shares that besides meeting a girl, that grandma paid to be her friend, there was a guy with whom she got along well. He is also an outcast like her, so they have a similar vibe. Grandpa agrees it's a great idea to make friends with someone with the same interests. The older woman disagrees. She believes befriending teenagers with similar personalities to her will only worsen her antisocial life. Before falling asleep, Teet visits the social media accounts of people she had met earlier. She finds Zeka funny based on his uploaded videos. On the other hand, her blood boils seeing the mean girl, Valentina. She looks stunning in her photos, but her inner beauty doesn't match her outer beauty. Lastly, she also stalks the love of her life, Eric. The lad is a hunk, and she enjoys scrolling through his posts, but she soon panics as she accidentally reacts to one of his old photos. The next day, Teet makes sure not to stink at school. She sprays a generous amount of deodorant and perfume on her body. At school, Seka complains about her strong perfume all around the room. It's so much that it hurts his nose. Eric arrives and greets Teet with a smile. It was all great, until he started complaining about the strong fragrance that made him sneeze. It triggered his allergies, so he stayed away from her. Valentina sees her boyfriend talking to Teet again. While the lady apologizes, Valentina intentionally spills ice cream on her shirt and blames her for walking backward carelessly. Eric asks his girlfriend to apologize, but she doesn't. Samantha comes to Teet's rescue and gives her a sweater to cover. In the bathroom, Teet looks at her messed up clothes. So, she goes inside the cubicle to change. Suddenly, she hears a familiar voice. It is Valentina. She is talking negatively about her. She says Teet is playing a victim in front of Eric. Valentina also says seeing her ticks her. She hates her greasy hair and dry elbows. Even more for last night, when she liked and unlike her boyfriend's photos. Lies, on the other hand, is on Teet's side. She lectures Valentina for making fun of a poor girl who couldn't fight back. Valentina is way prettier, and she doesn't need to pay too much attention to Teet. While Teet was eavesdropping, her phone rings. Valentina and Lies look in the direction of the sound, and almost catches her. Teet panics, and accidentally drops her phone in the toilet. Teet attends PE class wearing a jacket. She also shares what Valentina said earlier with Zeka. Zeka says that Valentina said those things, because she is jealous of her. He advises Teet not to think negatively about her appearance, because it will only open doors for people to bully her. Davy is drinking water when he sees Lies watching his all-time favorite, Star Generation. He approaches the lady to confirm it, and he is right. However, However, it seems like she's shy to express liking nerdy stuff. Meanwhile, Teet sweats excessively in Samantha's jacket. Samantha looks disgusted seeing the plight of her sweatshirt. Zeka tells Teet not to mind Samantha, because she was once Valentina's best friend. Eric catches Teet's attention. He seems completely fine, even when sweating, compared to her. Zeka gets tired of hearing Teet complaining, and advises her to fix her physical issues, if she is so concerned about them. At home, Teet is lying on the couch, when Janira walks in to talk to her. She acts sweet, and lets Teet rest on her lap. Surprisingly, the old woman has no issues with her body hair anymore. She doesn't care if she grows it long, and braids it after 
after. Teat laughs, but not till Janira reveals why she has come to talk to her. She is concerned that Teat keeps slouching and locking herself up in her room like an oldie when she has all the energy to go out. She encourages her granddaughter to not waste her energy while still young. Teat would love to use her power and have fun. It's just that things are complicated and she loves staying at home. Janira says that only if old Teat shows up in the present, she will slap her teenage version for not having fun. In the end, Teat promises her grandma to enjoy her life. Teat starts it out by researching food that decreases sweat. Janira is delighted to hear the lady is making efforts to look presentable, so she offers to help. Janira is hands-on with Teat's transformation. They cook a meal together, attend yoga classes, and remove Teat's armpit hair. To control the pit sweat marks the young lady is advised to wear liners under her armpits. Things are going well for Teat, and her parents start seeking jobs. In PE class, Teat boasts she doesn't sweat excessively like she used to. Seka admires her dedication and motivates her to continue her progress. The news of Lai's upcoming birthday party spreads throughout the campus. Everybody is talking about it, and it seems they are all invited. Teat gets distracted by the gossip about the party. She wants to go too, but she is not close to Lai's. While drinking water, she sees Lai's sitting on the bleachers, watching something on her phone. Teat grabs the opportunity to talk to her, because it would be her first party if given a chance to attend. Lies refuse to invite her, because they barely know each other. She also calls Valentina and tells her how desperate Teat was to get an invitation. The mean girls laugh so hard that it attracts other students' attention to the scene. Teat feels embarrassed, seeing everyone making fun of her. A loud whistle takes Teat back to her senses. It was all in her imagination, and she is still standing at the water fountain. Teat dares to talk to Lies. She is stuttering, but Lies eagerly listens to her. Instead of mentioning anything about the party, Teat tells her how the water at the fountain smells like a fish. Lies cannot relate, because she only drinks from a bottle. Teat continues talking about everything, but the party. Suddenly, Valentina's Persistence band lands on her face. Lies is concerned, because the impact was too strong. Valentina checks on her, but doesn't apologize. It is painful, but Teat pretends it didn't hurt and acts cool. Since Teat did not say what she was trying to say earlier, Lies asks her again. Teat is stressed, because Valentina is right behind her, so she replies, it is nothing. Teat is disappointed in herself for missing a chance to be invited. In biology class, Teat asks Seka and Davi if they have heard about Lies' party. Davi can't stop smiling, because he secretly admires Lies. Seka, on the other hand, doesn't care about it. Teat is glad to find out, she is not alone in not receiving an invitation. The teacher asks the students to group themselves for a project. The three agrees to be together, but the nerdy Davi says, they could work individually. He promises to consolidate their ideas, and do the task. Teat disagrees, because she is tired of staying at home. She pleads to go out, and work on the project together. Zeka convinces Davi, and invites the two to his place. Teat is delighted to hear that. Suddenly, she turns emotional, and thanks the boys for being her friend. Teat only has Davi and Zeka, and she can't afford to lose their friendship. The boys do not make fun of her, for opening up about making only two friends, and her 15 years of existence. They assure the lady that she can trust them. Zeka and Davi are both home buddies, and it doesn't mean they don't like spending time with Teat, if they refuse to go out with her. Zeka also advises her to stop apologizing, because it only makes her sound gullible. He encourages Teat to show the diva spirit, and be confident. Zeka rolls his eyes at Teat's behavior, as she acts cute in front of Eric. At the end of the class, Eric approaches the three, and asks if he can join their group for the project. Teat says yes, without hesitation. Davi and Zeka also accepts him, since they were short of a member. Eric leaves, and Teat wonders why he did not join Valentina's team. Zeka speculates he is afraid he'll fail biology again. Overjoyed after gaining new friends, Teat invites the two to hang out with her later. Teat requests to go to the beach, where Eric surfs. The man looks fresh and cool, even after bathing under the sun for hours. It makes Teat wonder why people like him look fine in whatever they do, compared to people like her, who are effortlessly unattractive. Hearing Teat whining, Zeka stands up and forces the lady to remove her shirt and be confident about her body. Teat refuses because she's ashamed of her belly. Zeka lectures her by telling his story. He is homosexual, and it took a while before he accepted himself. Imagine the discrimination he received after revealing his orientation. But now, he doesn't care about what people think and lives the life he wants as long as he doesn't harm others. Soon after, Davi arrives, and Zeka makes fun of him because he is overdressed for the beach. Eric is done surfing and sees the group. He thinks they have come because they will be doing the project. Teat informs the man they will work on it starting on the weekend. It's Liza's sweet 16th birthday, and Eric can't come. He requests to move the group activity to Sunday. The three say they are not invited, so they are free on the weekend. Hearing that, Eric sends them an invitation card, and forward the details of the party. He will be performing on that day, and Liza allowed him to invite more. The theme is the 60s. Davi complains, because he has nothing to wear. Teat offers to help, because she has everything at her grandma's place. Zeka is reluctant, thinking Liza is Valentina's best friend, and they can kick the three out anytime. Davi, on the other hand, says he will not be able to make it to the party because his brother, Dudu, is arriving on the same day. Unlike them, Teat is willing to go to the party. She tells Davi to bring Dudu, who she stalked on Instagram. She is persistent, and in the end, they agree to join her. Teat removes her shirt, to make them feel confident in their bodies. The family is having a great time, when someone knocks on the door. It is Zeka, and Teat rushes to get him. The family is amused, that their teenage girl has finally made friends. Teat gets pissed, seeing her family overreact. They head to the storage room, where they find a chest. The box contains clothes from the 60s that belong to Teat's grandparents. Zeka loves them, and picks his choice of clothes. Since Davi will arrive late, Zeka offers to wax Teat's mustache, 
and eyebrows. Teet refuses, but eventually says yes. They are still unfinished, when someone knocks on the door. It is Davi and his brother Dudu. The family is glad to see more friends coming over. Suddenly, Teet screams, making her father concerned. He goes to her room, and sees his daughter waxing her facial hair. The process is painful, and Teet refuses to pull another strip. However, she hears Davi and his brother outside, so has no choice, but to remove everything. Davi and Dudu wonder why Teet has red marks all over her face. Teet is embarrassed, and covers her face. She is reluctant to go to the party, because her face was red. Her grandma and mom come to her rescue, and help her cover the red marks with makeup. While Teet is fixing the problem, the boys are in a separate room, picking their costumes. Zeka acts as their stylist, and choose the best outfit for each of them. He also picks a dress for Teet, and delivers it to her in her room. Helena and Janera get emotional after Teet's makeover. They cannot believe their little girl has grown into a lady. Davi and Zeka's jaw drop after seeing Teet in her stunning emerald dress. Dudu also compliments her on how beautiful she looks, which flatters the lady. She makes cute expressions at Dudu, making her friends laugh. Teet's moment is interrupted, as Zeka's dad arrives. He will be driving them to the party. Teet is surprised that Zeka never told his dad his orientation. She asks Zeka if he talked about this to his his dad, and he affirms her he has never told his dad. The group go inside, and T cannot hide her excitement. She is so happy to finally attend a party for the first time. From the entrance, she can already see Eric performing with his band. The man's voice is mellifluous. Eric sees her, and pulls her on the stage. People cheered, as the two of them duet a song. Teet enjoys a moment. But as one can expect, she is daydreaming again. In reality, she is tuned deaf. The boys get irritated by her loud and not so good voice, so they ask her to stop singing. Teet asks her friends what to do at a party, because she has never been to one. Davi suggests they find the birthday girl first, because he has a present for her. Suddenly, Eric appears before them, and says he's glad they could make it to the party. Teet catches his attention. He almost didn't recognize her. She looks very pretty. Teet is flattered by his compliment, and tells the man she only trimmed her mustache, and eyebrows. Eric leaves when Valentina arrives. Zeka congratulates Teet on her new built confidence, because she didn't stutter even once in front of her crush. They all hit the dance floor, except for Davi. He is looking for lies to give her the gift he has bought for her. He finally spots her, and heads outside. Davi didn't get a chance to confess his feeling for Lies, but it is evident from the present he has bought for her that how he feels about her. Lies is happy to see him on her special day. She opens the gift, and finds Star Generation book. Not only that, Davi also managed to get it autographed by the actors for her. Lies is elated, because it is the best gift she has received. The night is still long, so Davi invites her to talk more about the Star Generation. Lies's mom interrupts them, so the lady bids goodbye. She asks Davi not to mention to anyone that she likes nerdy stuff. Davi promises to not say anything. From afar, Davi can hear Lies and her mom talking. Her mom is curious to know who was the boy she was talking to. Lies replies, he is a nerd from school. Davi is very intelligent, but he was hurt because it sounded like an insult when Lies said it. Inside, Teet is dancing with Dudu. Beside them are Eric and his girlfriend. Teet wonders why Eric keeps staring at her, when Valentina is right in front of him. She starts sweating out of nervousness, and shares this with Dudu. The man also sweats a lot like her, so he can relate. He invites her out to get some fresh air. Teet agrees. Outside, Dudu asks Teet to tell him about herself. The lady reveals she is socially awkward, and doesn't talk much. Dudu assures her she can and share anything with him. Teet looks around, and notices Davi sitting alone. She approaches him, and asks what is wrong. Davi feels lonely, because someone he did not expect, made him feel like an outcast, who should not attend such parties. Teet and Dudu comfort him by talking about stars. They manage to make him laugh in the end, and they also join him in naming the constellations. Teet spots a unique star, and wonders about its name. Dudu looks at her, and says its name is Tinira, the shiniest star. Other stars stay away from that star, afraid to be outshined by it. Teet is flattered even if she knows he is only joking. Suddenly, Samantha holds Teet's hands, asking for help. She feels like throwing up, and she wants Teet to be by her side. Teet wonders why she isn't using the bathroom inside. She also instructs her to stay outside, and stay by the door. Lai's mom is supportive and take pictures of her daughter with friends. The rude Valentina interrupts them and asks where Eric is. Lai says she saw him outside, so Valentina makes her come with her to search for him. Valentina goes to the comfort room to find Eric. Teet is surprised to see Valentina there, looking furious. Teet tries to stop Valentina from entering, because Samantha is throwing up. Teet assures her it is only her friend inside, and not Eric. Suddenly, Eric comes out of the washroom with Samantha. Valentina goes wild, and almost breaks into a physical fight with Samantha. Zeka, who has come to invite Teet to dance, stays there, and enjoys the scene. Valentina is upset with Eric for staying in the bathroom with a girl. Samantha is also mad at Valentina for overthinking. She explains, Eric was only helping her, because she was puking. Valentina doesn't believe her, and so doesn't Zeka who speculates they were doing something inside. Teet supports Samantha. She believes Samantha is telling the truth, so she comforts her. Inside, Samantha swears to Teet she never kissed Eric. They stop talking when Lai's mom comes. She asks them about a lady named Carol. Teet motivates her to cheer up, and go back to the party. Samantha excuses herself to wash up her face first. While waiting for her, Teet looks at Lai's childhood photos. Suddenly, she hears familiar voices in the next room, and walks closer. It is Valentina, and she is with lies. Valentina belittles other students, even her boyfriend, saying his brain is like that of an ant. The lady boasts her superiority among others, and tells lies to act superior, because they are not losers. Valentina asserts students should look up to them. 
because they are obviously better than them. T trembles as she gets nearer and sees their faces. Liz was only listening to her and never said a word. She was also the first to notice T behind Valentina. Valentina hates T ever since she first saw her, for many reasons. On the first day of school, she was hitting on her boyfriend. Apart from that, she also stinks, is ugly, and boring. Liz tries to stop Valentina from being rude to the lady, but she pays no heed. Valentina shouts at T to go away, and the poor lady runs after being insulted. Meanwhile, Liza's mom is still capturing everyone's photograph at the party. T comes out and pleads with the boys to leave the party with her. Dudu offers to drop her home because he has already booked a cab. Dudu accompanies the lady to the door and asks what is bothering her. T confesses that she thought having more friends would be fun. But in reality, it is not. Dudu cheers her up saying she has Davi and Zeka as her friends. The man also says he likes her company and enjoys every minute he spends with her. He asks when she is free because he wants to meet her again before he returns to college. Teet smiles and says she will come to his house the next day for the project. The lady bids goodbye and thanks him for a ride. Teet freaks out when Dudu asks for a kiss. She has never kissed anyone before and maybe she's bad at it. Dudu laughs and asks her to calm down because he would only kiss her on the cheeks. Teet is in dismay and pretends to have a toothache so he won't kiss her. Teet screams in the elevator, confused about who to choose between Eric and Dudu. On one side stands Eric and on the other Dudu. They both ask for Teet's kiss, and the lady grants them. Suddenly the doors to the elevator opens, and her father sees Teet kissing the mirror. Teet is very embarrassed and runs home. In the living area, Teet freaks out, seeing her whole family waiting for her arrival. She learns they were spying from the window, and saw her with Dudu. They are also curious to know if she enjoyed the party. Teet nods in a yes, and all of them screams, feeling happy for their girl. The next day, the three friends enjoy doing the project, while talking about random things. Davi's grandma brings tea for them. While sipping the tea, Teet looks at Davi's brother's photos on the wall. The old woman is proud to raise such good-looking lads. Suddenly, Teet wonders about the girl beside Dudu, hugging him. She almost coughs, learning it is Dudu's girlfriend, Ingrid, who also studies it at his school. Dudu interrupts his grandma and clarifies she was his ex-girlfriend. Eric arrives late, and Zeka jokingly asks why he left his dramatic girlfriend. At that moment, they discover Eric has broken up with Valentina. Dudu leaves them, and tells Teet she can ask him to accompany her home anytime she wants. Meanwhile, Eric also invites the lady to his band rehearsals later. Teet cannot contain her happiness that two boys are suddenly interested in her. In the end, she chooses to go with Eric. They go to an abandoned room and rehearse there. While Eric sings, he looks Teet in the eyes. The lady falls in love with him even more because of what he is doing. After the rehearsal, Teet compliments him for singing well. The lady shares, she almost cried because it is her first time being invited to watch a rehearsal. Eric finds her cute and kisses her. Teet considers it the best thing that has happened in her life. Teet goes home to find her parents want her to transfer schools because they cannot afford her tuition fee anymore. They also want to live separately and not be dependent on their parents forever. Teet refuses because she hates the thought of starting from scratch. Deep inside, her connection with Eric has improved and she looks forward to spending more time with him. Teet says she can go with him to Flame Go, but she wants to remain at school in Copacabana. Her dad pities her, so he agrees. Teet aces all subjects in class and is sure she will be accepted on scholarship. The next day, Samantha walks with her to the school because she needs to confess something. Teet also has something to share with her, but she wants Samantha to go first. The lady admits she lied to her at the party because she and Eric kissed. Samantha liked Eric, which is why her friendship with Valentina ended. Teet freaks out after hearing this. Instead of feeling upset with her best friend, she is mad at Eric for playing with their hearts. It is time to present the RNA project, but Teet's blood is boiling seeing Eric. He is smiling at her, acting innocent. She confronts him about kissing Samantha. The man freezes and holds Teet's hands, trying to explain himself. Valentina arrives, so Teet pulls away her hands, before she starts overthinking. The teacher instructs everyone to upload their presentation to his computer, as it is already connected to the projector. Group leaders transfer their files, and Valentina's group is the first to report. After Lai's presentation, Teet's group is next. The boys carry their project to the table, and Teet will be presenting it. She plays their presentation, but everyone is surprised to see a different video. It is the recording of the party, where Valentina can be heard calling the students loser. Teet is also shocked because she had clicked on their presentation. She freezes for a minute, and goes back to the computer to pause it. The teacher gets mad, for showing such video. Valentina feels humiliated, and blames it all on Teet. The poor girl swears she didn't know how it appeared on the projector. Valentina gets furious at her for playing innocent. She was the only one they saw eavesdropping on their conversation at the party. Valentina is sure she secretly recorded clips of them. The students humiliate Valentina because of the video. Eric also asks her to apologize to everyone. Valentina replies that Teet should be the one to say sorry. The lady denies her accusations and says she is not behind the video. Furious, Valentina pushes Teet and pulls on her hair. She also sits on top of her to slap her face. She is not done and so she ruins her glasses. The students enjoy the scene and takes videos of them fighting. Meanwhile, Teet's friends panic and tries pulling Valentino away. Their fight only stops when the principal arrives. The principal interrogates the two about the incident. Teet denies the accusation and her groupmates support her. Davi was the one who made the presentation and saved it to the flash drive. Zeka uploaded the file earlier and there were no videos of Valentina on the flash drive. Eric, on the other hand, had no contribution to the project, so he has nothing to do with it. Valentina doesn't believe them and insists it is Teet's fault. In the end, the principal decides to call their parents to school. Teet feels nervous because if her parents came to know that she got into trouble, they will force her to transfer. She must find a way to prove her innocence. Eric waits for her outside. He 
is still bothered about what Valentina had said about him. Eric asks Teet if she agrees with it. Teet tells the man that his brain is working great because he does well in surfing and singing. His only problem is that he doesn't care about the people around him. Teet's phone beeps. She receives a message about Davy's grandpa that he had passed away. Teet attends the burial ceremony with her grandma. She comforts Davy who is grieving because his grandpa was also his best friend. Teet may have only known him for a short time, but she cared for him. Zeka tells Davy it's fine for a man to cry and he won't judge him. Teet sees Duda with Ingrid. What was worse is that the lady called him baby and hugged him. Losing Eric was painful, and now Teet could not believe she will lose a chance with Dudu too. She asks Davy if the two of them get back together. The man doesn't know, and it makes her overthink. She cries like a baby, and Zeka stops her. He instructs the lady to focus on comforting Davy, because he needs her more. At home, Teet holds a grumpy face after Dudu broke her heart, and the death of her best friend's grandpa. Her family asks her to stop looking miserable, and smile from time to time. Grandpa also offers her chocolates to prevent stress, which pisses her off. The lady does not respond, so Janira requests her to say what she is feeling, so that they have an idea of what she is going through. Teet explodes and tells everyone to shut up. She cries, pleading them to let her feel sad, because she doesn't want to smile always to please others. She also points out how different she is from the family. They may encounter major problems, but still smile despite everything. While her having those problems will easily make her cry and suffer. Teet had an emotional breakdown, and she spent the night crying. When she finally felt better, she remembers Valentina's accusation. She goes on Instagram and compares videos of the guests at the party. The next day, she walks confidently to the principal's office to reveal something. Valentina stands at the door, still mad for exposing the video. Students also gather, excited to hear the one behind the incident. The principal instructs everyone to leave the office. But Teet wants more audience, so she tells the principal that it's fine to let them stay. Teet clarifies she is not behind the video, and is ready to prove her innocence. She analyzed the background song in Valentina's video, and found some uploaded videos of the guests that had a similar song playing in the background. Because of that, she was able to figure out what the people were doing in that exact part of the song. Teet confidently reveals it was Valentina's best friend who exposed her. The mean girl finds her theory crazy, because Lies was with her in the video. Teet said she was, but her mom took the video. Not only that, it all makes sense now why Lies' mom was looking for Carol at the party. Carol Carol and she are the same. Lies and Valentina went to the same kindergarten school, but Valentina bullied her because she was unattractive back then. It affected her confidence, so she decided to undergo nose surgery and lose weight, for which she had to take permission from her mom. The operation was successful, so Carol became popular at school, and used her second name, Lies, to forget her traumatic experience. She befriended Valentina, who had no idea she was the Carol she bullied before. Lies got emotional hearing this, and looked guilty. Valentina confronted her if Teet was telling the truth. She felt betrayed by her best friend. Lies recalled when she called her a plant, and made fun of her nose. She was diagnosed with depression at eight years old, because she bullied her. When her mom showed her the video, she had no intention of exposing it. However, Valentina's behavior must be corrected, and the best way to do that was to expose her video, to make her aware of herself. Valentina could not say a word, and walked away. The principal thanked Teet for solving the issue. Her friends were also proud of her for standing up for herself, and confessing everything, even if her enemy was the most popular girl. She also learned that Dudu will move to Rio next semester, to spend more time with them. He also clarified Ingrid was his ex-girlfriend, but she showed up at the burial because they remained friends. T could not contain her happiness not until Valentina called her name. Valentina apologizes to Teet, and she meant it this time. She had no idea how she was harming people, and only realized it after watching the video. Valentina cries, which surprised everyone. She feels ashamed of herself for being a monster. Valentina confessed that she was also afraid to be an outcast and so she started tormenting others. The reason why she belittles students is to make her look powerful. She considers it as a defense mechanism, so people won't notice she is weak inside. Teet offers a hug to Valentina. The lady bursts out crying, relieved to be accepted even after admitting her weakness. Lies also comes and chooses to forgive Valentina, and start afresh. The students clap, and the principal looks happy that the three reconciled. The next day, Teet's parents visits the principal to share they were struggling financially, but their daughter wanted to stay at the school. The principal assured them she would find a way, knowing how intelligent Teet was. In the end, Valentina becomes part of the circle. Teet dates Dudu, while her best friend Samantha ends up with Eric. Davy also gets along well with his crush lies, and Zeka meets the man of his dreams. Teet's experience made her realize to enjoy life and not take all things seriously. She may not know what the future holds, but she wants to enjoy every bit of her life by only stressing- <laughs>